Hello and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. As always, if you've been here before, thank you. If this is your first time, welcome. It's 2023 and we're like halfway through the month. I cannot believe that, but I have some books to talk to you about. So I have read four books since January 1st and I'm really excited to talk about most of them. <laughs> Let's talk about the one I just finished. So I just finished Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. And I watched an interview on YouTube with her yesterday. This is her debut novel. And she was, she originally wrote a 700 page book that was rejected 98 times because again she's a debut author and she wrote a 700 page book they're not looking for that in the publishing world from a debut author so uh one day she was at work they had just had a work meeting and she presented information then a man in that meeting basically took credit for all of her work and she was furious after that meeting. She, she's thinking in her head, are you kidding me? I'm sitting right here. I just presented that information. So she goes back to her desk. So this is after having written, and, and I don't know how old she is, but my guess is she's older than me. So she's probably somewhere in her 50s. That's my guess. I, I could be wrong. But anyway, so she goes back to her desk, furious, and she writes the first chapter of what is now Lessons in Chemistry. So this book was recommended to me by my sister-in-law and I definitely trust her recommendations. So I was surprised when she said, oh, I know a book you should read. You should read Lessons in Chemistry. And it's been all over Bookstagram, right? And I've seen it in the bookstores and I could picture what the cover of that book was. And I said, isn't that a romance or a rom-com? She's like, no. Um, oh, okay. So uh, a couple weeks went by and I DNF'd two books in a row. We'll talk about that. And I thought, you know what? I, I need a surefire hit at this point after two DNFs in a row. And so I downloaded the Kindle version of Lessons in Chemistry and what it is about. So it isn't a rom-com, although for a while near the beginning, I thought, did I misunderstand her? Because I thought it was going to be a romance. And no, I didn't misunderstand her. There is an unusual romance in the beginning of the book. But so our main character, Elizabeth Zott, she's young, she's a chemist, she is no nonsense, she's brilliant, she's driven, she's interested in the work, period. That's what her life is, is chemistry. And at every turn, she is being confronted by sexism and worse. And it, I mean, it's just a mess. She meets a man who is in the same chemistry lab who has been nominated for the Nobel Prize. He, he's given whatever he wants for his research, but he's had a hard life too. So when I was reading that part, I'm like, D yeah, maybe I misunderstood her because this seems like it's gonna be a romance. It's not. I, when I was watching that interview with the author yesterday, did I say this is set in the 50s and 60s? It's set in the 50s and 60s. When I was watching that interview yesterday with the author, the interviewer said to her, this is a fun book, but it's not a light book. And that's how I would describe it. Although it's not, it does discuss difficult topics, but it, it is not a heavy book. What it is to me, the best word I can use to describe it is it's quirky. And whenever a book is quirky, I have now learned not everyone likes quirky. For instance, one of the best characters in this book is a dog that we hear his thoughts. That's not going to be for everyone. <laughs> it was for me. I was totally into it, but I'm having trouble deciding how I'm going to rate it. It's not a five star for me. So I'm deciding is it a four star or is it a really strong three star? I would recommend this to readers who enjoy uh, something different. I mean, this is a work of contemporary fiction, but I don't know that I can easily pigeonhole it. So it is hard to decide 
where I would put this book exactly. And like I said, I don't think it's going to be for everyone. So who's it for? It's, some, it's for people who are okay with a dog where we hear his thoughts and he's totally awesome. His name is 630. If that gives you an idea of, of uh, how unusual this book is going to be. I would read this perhaps as a palate cleanser. Um, if you've been reading perhaps a lot of classics or some really sad books, but you don't like rom-coms, you don't, you don't like romance. Uh, I think this, for me, this worked as a really good palate cleanser. Well, one of the interesting things is uh, Apple TV, uh, Apple Plus TV, whatever it's called, they're gonna do um, like an eight part, I think, TV series, and it's supposed to come out in the summer of 2023. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I posted about this book on Instagram yesterday in my attempt at uh, mimicking the cover. The cover is so misleading. They, in my opinion, and they do talk about this in that YouTube video I was watching because the interviewer said to the author, oh, I love the cover of your book. And the author's like, really? Because we've gotten a lot of pushback on it. Put me in the category of there should have been a lot of pushback on this cover. It just, it, it turns off a reader like me who doesn't, enjoy rom-coms because that's what this cover looks like although i don't know what kind of cover you would do i meant to look up um the, what the uk cover looks like I'll, I'll put it up here so that's lessons in chemistry i'm still deciding how i'm gonna star it because i feel like a three isn't good enough um but i don't know that i'm overly comfortable with a four and yet it's totally a book i would recommend for the right reader when you're looking for uh a fun read that's not super light so okay the next book i want to talk to you about so this is number four in a series and it's lucy by the sea i love olive kittredge by elizabeth Stroud. it's one of my favorite books of all time uh, but Strout's writing can go either way with me. And um, I, the first book in this series is called My Name is Lucy Barton. I absolutely loved it. Five stars. The second book in the series, I DNF'd. The third book in the series just came out in, was it 2022? Oh, William. I loved it. And now Lucy by the Sea. I loved it. Although I have to say the writing it could have been my mood. The writing was, is she is going with a very sparse way of writing in this book. And it was kind of annoying me. It felt a little heavy handed at times. Like, okay, we get it. Like, you know, we're, we're getting this story through Lucy Barton's, uh, from her observations. And the writing is so sparse that it's almost a caricature. However, Again, I loved it. So however, Elizabeth Strout just has a way of digging deep and stating the obvious, but in like such a special way. So our main character, Lucy, and her former husband, William, who has been in all of these books, but they've been divorced. They were married for like 20 years and now they've been divorced for about 20 years. And at this point, uh, Lucy's second husband has passed away. William's like third wife has left him. And, and Lucy and William, they've always had a pretty close relationship. They have two uh, now adult daughters together. And the pandemic, COVID-19 hits the world. And William, he's a scientist, so he knows how serious this is. They're both living in New York City in their own separate apartments. And William realizes this is not the place to be with this pandemic. There's gonna be a lockdown. <laughs> so he rents a house in Maine. And uh, a lot of Elizabeth Strout's books are set in Maine. She is a New York City woman, but originally she is from Maine and it, that you know her heart is there. So anyway, William says, Lucy, come with me. Like, we need to get you out of the city. And Lucy's like thinking it, it might be for a week or two. <laughs> so anyway, the story develops from there. Did I want to read a book about the pandemic? I did not. Um, this is about COVID. This is about the pandemic. It does get political. 
I wasn't really in the mood for any of that, but it's Elizabeth Strout. I, I've loved already two out of three books in the series, now three out of four. And I trust her, so I went ahead and read it. It is a short book. This could have been read in one sitting. Somehow I managed to take three days to read it. But if you like My Name is Lucy Barton or O. William, you definitely, you need to keep on with the journey of Lucy and William and, and, and read this. I mean, I don't usually cry at books. Again, it could have been the mood I was in, but I got pretty teary-eyed. Did a tear drop down my face? I don't think so. But it and it wasn't even a, a part of the book that um, that was between Lucy and William. Although there are parts of that that are very uh, emotional too. But again, she does it in a very stark, simple writing way, and I can see that might turn off some people. But uh, I definitely say if you've read the others, you you're gonna you're gonna want to read this, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I think I gave it four stars. Okay, the next book I read is, it's a mystery thriller, All the Dark Places by Terry Parlato. It's set in Boston. Uh, it's told from two different point of views. So we have Molly, uh, one of our main characters, and uh, she she's in her 30s. She's married to Jay. You can tell she really loves her husband. Uh, they've been married, I think, a couple of years. And at the beginning of the novel, it's Jay's 40th birthday. So she throws him a small party for his birthday with their closest friends, which are three other couples. And the next morning, Jay is found dead. And the mystery goes from there. Um, we know early on something is off with Molly and very early on we find out she's had some really deep childhood trauma. So that's going to play out through the book. She She's trying to figure out what happened, who killed her husband. And at the same time, we have a Boston police detective. She's, I, I love that she's 60 years old. I love that our police detective, you know, is a more mature woman. Uh, she, she gets things done. So that is our second point of view throughout this book. Set in Boston, mystery thriller. I just thought this had my name written all over it. I was wrong. And it was after finishing this book that I decided, if you watched my 2023 reading goals video, that I am going to DNF more often in 2023 and faster because I should have DNF'd this book. I knew pretty early on the writing was mediocre. The plot and the characterization seemed very simplistic to me. Uh, I knew this was not gonna make a three star. If a mystery thriller is a three star for me, that's pretty good. I, I knew this wouldn't be. Uh, something miraculous would have had to happen and it didn't. So this to me was a meh book and it was a waste of two days of reading for me. So that that is what I made that goal after reading this book. Speaking of DNFs, I, I should mention the two I DNFed uh, pretty early on. Uh, well, one was a mystery thriller called Hello Transcriber. And I saw this, I, 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 there's a YouTuber or booktuber that I watch all the time and I know we have such different taste. I know it, I know it, but that doesn't stop me from trying books she, she recommends. And Hello Transcriber sounds so interesting. So a mystery thriller through a police transcriber's point of view, like sign me up, right? That, that I love that concept. No, this uh, this book just felt like it was going nowhere. Like it just did not have the you know the the meat behind it. I think I made it to like thirty two percent on my Kindle. I did get it from the library on my Kindle. So if I had purchased it, I would have made myself finish it. <laughs> but I did not purchase it. It was from the library, so I just returned after the 32% mark, because I'm like, I just I just don't care about this plot or these characters, just not for me. Great concept though. And then the other one I DNF'd, in a way I'm surprised and in a way I'm not surprised, and that was A Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. I read a Maggie O'Farrell book 
years ago. Oh, I forget the title. I'll put a picture here. Um, and I loved it, okay? So that was my only Maggie Farrell book until Hamnet came out. And everyone was loving Hamnet. And Hamnet sounded like a kind of book I would love. I liked it. Um, I, I forget what I gave it. I think three stars. I just expected that was going to be like a four or five star read from how much other booktubers who we often have the same taste, how much they loved it. And it's not that her writing's bad. Her writing's great. I just, I wasn't just, I just wasn't that into it. So then A Marriage Portrait comes out and from the description of the book, I'm like, why would I care about that? That doesn't, that isn't like getting me excited to read it, but it was Maggie O'Farrell. And again, other booktubers who I often sync up with, with reading taste, are, were enjoying it. I forget how far I got in it, maybe 15%. Again, I got it from the library on my Kindle and I just returned it because this was after I finished All the Dark Places and I'm like, nope, even though you kind of were thinking of mystery thrillers when you said I'm gonna DNF more often and quicker, I wasn't expecting to DNF a Maggie O'Farrell book and I did, I don't regret it. <laughs> I know other people love it and maybe if I had kept going, but I just, I didn't feel like, I just wasn't interested in the story. Didn't do anything for me. Again, her writing's really good. Of course it is, but. Okay, the final book that I finished and I finished it on January 1st. In a way, I'm glad I didn't finish it in December because I would have had to decide, was this gonna kick off my number one book in my top 10? Uh, and I think it would have. So Charles Dickens, David Copperfield. You know, sometimes I just feel like, Susan, don't you ever learn? Because in a way I was surprised that I loved this so much. Why? Why am I surprised? I read Bleak House last year, loved it. Um, I read Great Expectations and A Tale of Two Cities when I was a kid, when I was a teenager and loved it why do I keep getting surprised? I think the length was daunting. And in my head, I think I had more like an Oliver Twist idea, like just awful, 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 awful things happening to our main character just time and time again. Whereas I knew this was a semi-autobiographical book by Dickens and his life wasn't awful. And in the beginning, not the very beginning, because at the very beginning, I'm like, oh, yeah, his life isn't so bad. It, it takes a really downturn, but don't worry because we are gonna go from there. If you are intimidated by the length, let me just say this. Every chance I got between Christmas and New Year, I was reading this book. That's like, I think I, last year I did it with War and Peace, read it, you know, in December, the last half of the, the month. This year I did it with David Copperfield. I need to do that every year. That period between like, you know, Christmas or right before Christmas to the end of to the end of the year is such a special reading time. And that is the time for a longer book that you can just savor, not rush through. I mean, in a way I wanted to rush through David Copperfield because I'm like, where's this all gonna go? Where, you know, what's gonna happen to this person, this person? Another thing I loved about David Copperfield that sometimes in a Dickens book I don't like is sometimes there's just so many characters all at once, you, it just gets overwhelming and you're like, who was that again? In David Copperfield, the way we're introduced to this, because we're gonna end up with a cast of characters but the pacing at which we're introduced to those characters is so easy in this book. So I, I, at the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so different from Dickens in that we only have these characters. But no, he, he slowly adds in more to the soup, right? <laughs> and he mixes that soup up and they intertwine. I mean, that's Dickens, right? He brings all these, th these people and these situations that you don't think are gonna ever be connected, but he connects them and that is the beauty of it. So he wrote this like mid-career in his novels. And I've read that this is his favorite of his books. Again, it's semi-autobiographical. 
I, this is going to be hard to believe. So, you know, I loved Bleak House. I loved it. It was very hard for me to get into though. David Copperfield, I was in right from the start and I, I'm going to have to put it above Bleak House. I can't believe it. And so now, you know, I, I, I still want to read through his major novels and I'm wondering, is anything going to be able to top David Copperfield? And I'm also wondering, is any book this year going to top David Copperfield? We are getting, so our main character, David Copperfield, he is narrating this story to us, his story to us from his birth to, you know, like early middle age, I feel like is where we, we end up. And I keep, I keep asking myself, what is it about this book that made you obsessed with it? Because I was obsessed. Like I said, any chance I got, I went back to this book. And I mostly read it though uh, on my iPad. Uh, I downloaded a PDF from the Gutenberg Project and like was highlighting everywhere. Um, I listened to a bit of it on audio when I was out and about, but um, mostly uh, via the PDF of the book. I think it's it's just these characters and the relationships, this found family that David has and that other characters have. It's it's like so it's so touching and heartwarming. I mean, we've got our villains in this book, okay? We got like a handful of villains. Ew, yuck. But then when we're with the other characters, like I wanted those characters in my life. I wanted the love, the care, the sensitivity that they show each other. I wanted that. Like they're just, they were wonderful. So even though the plot, the plot drives this, right? But I, it was the characters I fell in love with. I, I, I don't know that this can be topped for uh, 2023's reading. Everything I'm gonna be reading is going to is going to go up against this one for my favorite book of the year. I just I know it. So those are the four books I have read so far and the two DNFs. Today is I think today's January 15th. Uh, I so I am very happy with how the reading for 2023 has started. Have you read any of these books? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Have you read something already that you're like, oh my gosh, what would top this for the year? That's such a weird feeling that the very first book I read for the, I finished it on January 1st. I had like a hundred pages to go and, and read them, maybe a little over a hundred and finished it on January 1st. But have you done that too, where you've already read what you're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I don't know what would top it. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you and I will see you guys all again very soon. Bye.